How's it going, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? My name is Prodigy, and welcome to our video on the channel. Today, guys, we're going to be covering another episode of the Birth by Sleep Ulta Mania. If you're unfamiliar with this series, uh, I recommend checking it out in the description down below, in the card on the top right, or in the end card at the end of this video if you want to watch this video first. We've covered lots of interesting information. This is the fifth episode, I believe, and I would probably say this is a about the halfway point. This is the 20 question section. We'll be doing two videos on this, one covering the first 10 questions, the other covering the other 10. And then after that, we got some plot mysteries and scenario mysteries. So uh, we still got a long way to go, man, but I've been having a lot of fun. This will be a little bit different of a section compared to what I've covered in the past, as there are quick questions and answers for the entire Kingdom Hearts series, actually. Not just Birth by Sleep, but including Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 2, Coded, Days, so on and so forth. That's any Kingdom Hearts game they felt like asking questions for is in this section. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Why do Roxas and Ventus look alike? Because inside Sora, which is Roxas' body, is Ventus' heart. As was shown in the opening to Birth by Sleep and the ending to last episode, Sora and Ventus' heart are linked. And so Roxas, who is a part of Sora, was affected by that and looks just like Ventus. When he was born into the world, he linked with Ventus, filling his fractured heart. Many years later, when Ventus was on the verge of disappearing after his fight with Anita, Sora took him in to his own heart. Why did Roxas faint in Castle Oblivion on day 297? Because he had gotten too close to both Sora and Ventus, his real self. Before day 297 and days, Sora had been to Castle Oblivion, as well as the fact that Ventus is asleep somewhere in the Room of Awakening. Both Sora and Ventus can be called Roxas's real selves, and when he felt their presence, it made him faint. Is it possible that Roxas has a heart? It is thought that it could be Ventus's heart. In Kingdom Hearts 2 of them, there were clues to him having a heart, and in days we saw Roxas crying, proof that he could have a heart. As said in question 1, he has taken a lot of himself from Ventus, but perhaps when Sora and Roxas were separated, Ventus's heart stayed in Roxas? Okay, so this is something that Amora probably just didn't want to give the answer to right away because Days definitely made it clear, which had already released at this time by the way, Days had made it pretty clear that he did most likely have a heart, but I'd assume that he wanted to keep this a little bit hush-hush because of Dream Drop Distance, which was a upcoming game at the time, which would feature a cutscene in the world that never was that would hint at Sora being able to, you know, save all of these guys, save Roxas, save Ventus, save Shion, that they had hearts that lived on inside of him but that the way he explained that that last part specifically but perhaps when Sora and Roxas were separated and his heart stayed in Roxas that sounds really weird but the more I think about it, the more it kind of makes sense but it, it, it's still just really weird to read that just up front speaking about the other questions nothing too much to say uh, but about question one I did not know about that little detail about Ventus's uh, heart going to Sora after the Vanitas fight or years after the Vanitas fight I figured it was always like immediately after or it was like I, I don't know it was during some weird time frame during Birth by Sleep, but an important distinction is that Ventus's heart was fractured in the beginning of Birth by Sleep. He was younger, his heart was fractured by Xehanort, we saw that scene, that's when Sora linked with him, filling his fractured heart, which allowed Ventus's heart to, I guess, form Vanitas. Sounds very confusing out loud, but yeah. But uh, let's move along. Why can Roxas dual wield? Because he can use both Sora's and Ventus's Keyblades. Sora can wield two Keyblades at once because he has Ventus's as well as his own. As Roxas is a part of Sora, he also can use two. In days, Roxas awakened his ability to dual wield after fighting Xion. In Kingdom Hearts 2, once Sora absorbs him, he can also dual wield. Why was Riku chosen as the original wielder of the Keyblade? Because he was chosen by Terra to inherit. To use a Keyblade, you must have been chosen to inherit as well as been chosen by the Keyblade itself. In Birth by Sleep, you could see that Terra performed the ceremony with Riku, and that is why Riku was able to take the Keyblade that Sora used. Why did Kairi end up with Sora and Riku? It has to do with Aqua's magic. 
Nine years before Kingdom Hearts, Kairi was thrust into the outside world and found herself on Sora and Riku's world, and some Seeker of Darkness thought that she had been able to search for a Keyblade Wielder, but what actually saved her was the magic spell Aqua had put on her. And we saw a little bit of this in Melody of Memory as well. So those three questions are things generally known uh, throughout the Kingdom Hearts community. The reason that Riku was the original wielder of the Keyblade is because he was chosen by Terra to inherit it. Roxas can dual wield because he has Sora and Ventus's hearts inside him essentially. Same thing kind of the other way around with Sora. Sora has his own heart. He earned the Keyblade. Ventus, his heart is inside of his and Sora is able to do a wheel through that. If things do seem a little bit confusing, it could potentially be to translation sometimes, but most of these things are generally known in the Kingdom Hearts community. Nothing too much to say about them, but if you didn't know them, well, now you know. And now for the final uh, four questions that we'll be covering in today's video. Why can Kyrie use a Keyblade? Because she was touched by Aqua's Keyblade. The Keyblade inheritance ceremonies performed with the Keyblade Master when they touched someone using a Keyblade. When Kyrie was running away from the Unverse and Birth by Sleep, she grabbed Aqua's Keyblade, which performed the ceremony. That is why she was able to use a Keyblade in Kingdom Hearts 2 to help Sora. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna pause and talk about this one for a bit. I'm not that big of a fan of that. I feel like the Keyblade ceremony should be something intentionally done by the Keyblade Master, not, oh, I touched your Keyblade on accident. I have a Keyblade now. I, I, I'm not that big of a fan of that. However, because of that, we got this. We got Kyrie beating the mess out of Zayd in Remind. So I'll take it. I'll take it. But I do think the Keyblade Ceremony should have a lot more prestige to it than that. But this has been something that has been known for years as well. So although, while I don't prefer this, I don't care at the end of the day. It is, it is what it is. Who is Apprentice Xehanort really? Master Xehanort commanding Terra's body. Master Xehanort wishes to bring back the Keyblade War and see what happens afterward with his own eyes. But once he found a way to accomplish this, he was already an old man with only a few years left in him. Wishing to become young again, he finds Terra and defeats him with darkness so he can take his body. That is the Xehanort that Ansem the Wise picks up and makes his number one apprentice. Where did the organization's coat and mark come from? Xemnas remembering his human years. One year after birth by sleep, Xehanort as well as five other apprentices toss aside their hearts. Then the nobody Xemnas was born and the organization which he creates take a lot of things from his memories as a human. But as Xemnas had two people who he was, Terra and Master Xehanort, he takes from both of their memories. And final question for today, what is the origin of Castle Oblivion? It is the transformed version of Land of Departure after it was sealed. Castle Oblivion's original form was Land of Departure where they were in training. It is a special place between the realms of darkness and light and has been protected for generations so that it is not used for evil. A device was set in place just in case of such an event and after Master Ericus was killed and Aqua closed the keyhole of the world, it put this device in action. It turned into a castle which would draw anyone who goes there into oblivion. And that will finish the first half of the 20 question section of the Ultimania interview. I do think there's a lot of like mystery about Xehanort, even in this interview when they ask questions about Apprentice Xehanort and the organization. And we're still finding out things about Xehanort to this day. I mean, earlier um, when we talked about Kyrie having a Keyblade, uh, we saw a little bit of that just recently in a recent game of Melody of Memory of her being sent to uh, Sora and Riku is how she ended up there. There's some extra dialogue that hints at like him knowing knowing about Quadratum, knowing about like these lost masters, this other side, and I really wonder what role he kind of plays into it. Now the thing about the organization coat is extremely weird because he says it's from Xemnas remembering his human years, aka Xehanort slash Terra, the coat coming from Xehanort specifically. They say here that the coat used by the organization was something that Master Xehanort originally wore, which is true. We do see young Xehanort walking around in a coat, and we do see this in Remind as well, but it's 
I, I don't know how, like, readers would interpret this who have just been birthed by sleep. I guess this is one of those half-truth sort of scenarios, because they do introduce it in a way that the master kind of told him about this coat. It wards off darkness. Very, um, very bizarre and mysterious for sure. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about all of this? Is there anything you found out in this video that you didn't already know? Anything you got further clarification on, further meaning to that you enjoyed? In the next video, we'll be covering the other 10 questions, and then we'll be going into the plot mysteries, the juicy stuff. But if you enjoyed, um, you already know what to do. Leave a like, Share the video with a friend or family member, and last but not least, if you have not already, and want to become a part of the union, all you have to do is hit that red subscribe button down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and supporting the series. It really, really does mean a lot to me. Um, but my name is Prodigy, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out to you guys. Bye.